Hello, good evening and welcome back once again to the Racing Post In The Know, sponsored by Coral. And we are back once again with the Labbrooks Trophy, the feature race of Saturday afternoon. And it's a cracking renewal on paper. We'll be getting stuck into that uh, and uh, everything else uh, besides as the evening uh, progresses. Uh, uh, so uh, this is, of course, live and interactive right now on YouTube and Facebook. So uh, hit uh, like, hit subscribe and get those comments and tips in on the comments section. But uh, like I said, the Labrooks Trophy uh, is a, a cracker with uh, plenty of Irish intrigue uh, and uh, they've only won it once uh, since 1965. So they're going to have to have a, a big chance with uh, three Mullins runners and a, uh, a De Bromhead runner, of course, uh, after taking the, the big race at uh, Haydock last week. Uh, they could well be going in again uh, with a, a couple of chances uh, tomorrow, in fact, uh, uh, over the, uh, the fences earlier on in the card as uh, well. But uh, we've got eight second season chasers uh, who uh, possibly have uh, quite a bit to uh, uh, improve on their handicap marks. And of course, we might well see a return to the days of the likes of Denman, uh, Native River and Bobsworth. Uh, could we see a grade one performer coming out of tomorrow's race? Fingers crossed we will. Uh, we're also over to Newcastle. In theory, uh, you wanted uh, a change in the weather. Well, you've got it. The, uh, the storms that uh, are hitting the country at the moment do put Newcastle slightly in jeopardy. But uh, fingers crossed we, uh, we do get the fighting fifth because Epitant gives uh, Nicky Henderson a fighting chance to win a fifth uh, renewal of this race in the past 10 years. Uh, she's back in the, the game tomorrow afternoon up against the youngster Mon Morale and a few old favourites as well. And there's other handicaps to get stuck into including the rehearsal chase which we've had two very dramatic renewals uh, with old boys winning it uh, over the last couple of seasons. So lots to like about tomorrow, assuming of course everything gets the go ahead. My name is Ross Briley and I'll be taking you through the show tonight in the company as ever of some very fine tipsters indeed and he's back in the saddle with a couple of winners in the paper today so it's all smiles for Paul Keeley despite the fact that he's been up since about 4am this morning. Uh, hopefully Paul you can make it through till 7pm without uh, nodding off and yeah, you can give us a few winners. Yeah I'm working in the afternoon, I'm working in the office, I've missed my afternoon kip. Uh, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm a bit tired. Don't you know? You have to give me a nudge or I zone out. But I, uh, I, you know, I think I know what I need to say. But yeah, we're a bit worried about Newcastle, aren't we? Red weather warning for wind. Yeah. Uh, and it, it almost depends on how much damage there is uh, to the to the race course itself, because <laughs> they're talking about flying debris resulting in danger to life, damage to buildings and homes, etc. It sounds really bad. Uh, hopefully, it blows through and hasn't done too much. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't sound good. Um, but like I said, yeah, it's uh, everything. It, it's been a, a proper British uh, few weeks in national hunt racing, isn't it? Everything is just the weather, the weather, the weather. Yeah, yeah, and we, yeah, we need it. We need it to chuck it down, you know, fairly quickly, so we can get all the good horses out and get good competitive racing. But at least we've got that in several races, several of the races at Newbury. Uh, so you know, some real good betting heats to get stuck into. Yeah, if you could just chuck it down on maybe a Monday or a Tuesday or something there, so uh, the, the big races don't get affected by the ground or potential uh, inspections. Uh, but uh, Keels is in the studio and uh, uh, at home, as ever, is Tom Siegel ready and raring to go, I assume? Yeah, can't wait. Really looking forward to this. Uh, glad to be back, as always. Uh, didn't think I was on best form last week. Didn't struggled a bit with uh, with. Uh, with the show, but I was still a lot better than you three clowns. But uh, but we're ready, ready and rary to go now, and I'm really looking forward to it. Love the Hennessy. Uh, just 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 a couple, couple, race I'm just going to go season. in. Tom, you said you weren't going for you tipped a you tipped a forecast in the three miler with a sixteen to one winner, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the tipping was all right. I just felt like my my analysis wasn't up to scratch. But we're getting better. <laughs> we're we're on form today. We're on form today. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Love the, Hen the Labrooks Trophy. Should I say? Always call it the Hennessy. Can't call it the Hennessy anymore. The Labrooks Trophy. It's my favourite jumps race of the whole season. I've always lived in the vicinity of Newbury, and it's just a wonderful race going back to the days when my old favourites, Borough Hill Lads and Diamond Edge used to win it. That tells you how old I am. But I absolutely love the race, and I think this year's race is right up to scratch. Yeah, we've had, um, I'd say, probably three years of, uh, uh, of slightly below par runs, maybe four if you, uh, if you, if you look at it a bit deeper. But um, do you think we could see a, a bounce back to some genuine um, spring grade one performance coming out of it? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, it fits very snugly into a two uh, categories, isn't it? The, the Labrooks Trophy. It's either won by a Gold Cup horse, or it's a, just an, a, a run-of-the-mill handicap. And we've seen uh, that over the last three or four years, maybe just a run-of-the-mill handicap. But if there is a group one, Grade One a horse in it, they tend to win. It's just you pay your money, it takes your choice, isn't it? I don't, we don't know, yet know whether the Irish horses coming over are Grade One horses. If they are, they'll be too good. 
If they're not, anything can win. OK, well, we'll, uh, we'll get to your selections uh, for the big race uh, a little bit later on. Uh, David Stevens uh, is joining us uh, to uh, represent Coral, and we've got a, yeah, hopefully two fantastic meetings tomorrow, uh, David. But uh, either way, um, I think we all agree with Tom. The, uh, the big race is a cracker. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm with Tom on this one as well. It's, it's always been a highlight for me, won by some great horses, of course, uh, in recent years, the likes of Native River, of course. Um, in terms of potential action there today, obviously, Kills is back on form, which bodes well for tonight. Siegel there is just been playing it down last week. He popped up with that huge price forecast. And actually, if you'd listened to Kills as well, you'd have had the tricast in that race as well. I had a shocking weekend last weekend. Bristol de May, I thought, was a certainty in the Betfair chase. Could not have been more wrong. Aplutard, now Gold Cup favourite. And if we saw a potential star today at Newbury, was it John Bomb? Well, we went 6-1 to one for the Supreme Novices immediately after he won. By the close of play, that was nine to two. So he could be the class act there today. Paisley Park was disappointing, obviously, in the long distance hurdle, but plenty to look forward to tomorrow. And as you say, let's hope the weather that we've all been waiting for a change in it. Let's hope the change doesn't scupper our uh, our big races tomorrow. And Tom, uh, live uh, action to uh, reaction to that nine to two about John Bond. Way too short, isn't it? I mean, we haven't even seen an Irish horse. What happens when an Irish horse comes out and wins by twenty five lengths tomorrow in the Grade One? What price of that? That goes then what? Five, five to two? And then what does John Bomb do? Nine, what's the percentage then? I mean, I don't know. That's way too short, isn't it, for beating, wow. winning a maiden hurdle at Newbury? I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting that, uh, that response from, uh, from Tom. There. Well, yeah, I mean, it looked to me like John Bomb was massively hyped up um, just based on the form of that Newbury bumper. He's come out and he's absolutely, you know, he's jumped every, every hurdle beautifully. Um, the only thing is, like, the horse with form can't jump, can he? Like, you know what I mean? Get, let's come out of it, good risk at all. I had a good bet on him. Uh, at a decent price because I thought all the prices were wrong and he ballooned every hurdle. I mean, you know, he looked, he, he just looked like he's scared to jump. Yeah. Like, you know, so he can hold the form down, but crikey, he didn't half win well, didn't he? You can't, I mean, this is you know what I mean? He's fast, he jumps fast. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'd back him at nine or two. No. Well, you know, but I'm now a fan rather than a detractor. Like, you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Well, I mean, and and I, 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 not in this unit necessarily, but I've definitely sat next to people who went Champ did that at Newbury, and when uh, Chantry House won, right? So what they've been, they've, you know, they're all, they're hyped up and yeah. see they're, yeah, they're yeah, great they, one horses. They, they tend up, they, they tend to be very, very good, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, he he looked he looked potentially brilliant, didn't he? Like, you know, and you can't argue with the way he's jumped or travelled. Um, so yeah, we have to see where he goes from here. But nine to two now, not for me. Uh, but you wouldn't be surprised um, after his next race if he's shorter at the same time. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, don't forget that uh, uh, we uh, we spent a lot of time uh, talking about supreme novice uh, chances uh, earlier on this uh, this season, only to see the favourite go off odds on. So um, who knows? John Bond, if he wins another couple, uh, he might be even shorter. But uh, there are plenty of challenges to come out and throw down the gauntlet. Uh, but uh, of course, we're talking about uh, Cheltenham, uh, and we've got the racing post Christmas countdown continuing as well. You can be off to Cheltenham uh, for the ultimate festival experience for you and three friends, uh, plus uh, plenty of weekly prizes as uh, well. Uh, all you need to do is place a bet on the Racing Post app on any of the uh, below dates. So uh, one of those, of course, is today. So uh, better get studying that, uh, that Dundalk and Chelmsford form, that's for sure, uh, very quickly indeed. Uh, so uh, let's get stuck into the racing again. Like I said, I've got the, the chat box open here. Uh, plenty of people getting uh, getting in touch all uh, uh, ready. Uh, Brian uh, suggests uh, that I should be off. He says, are you coming to Fairy House, Ross? I can pick you up at the airport. Sure, why not, Brian? I'll Flights are only about three quid return at the moment, aren't they? Um, and uh, good evening to, uh, to Helen Sheridan, to Tom Leach. Uh, oi, oi, Savaloy, says Tom Leach. He's in good form. Uh, Luke Salmon wants winners, winners, winners. Uh, and uh, uh, Natalie says, get the rest of your hair cut. Thank you very much, Natalie. I appreciate that. I'll finish it off next week. Uh, but uh, getting stuck into the racing then. Let's have a look. Newbury and Newcastle. Uh, starting off here uh, with a fascinating uh, handicap at Chase, uh, where Killer Clown and Kaluki uh, are in fact co-favourites now, five to one. Uh, Killer Clown, Kaluki, and Cap Course. So uh, if you uh, if you fancy them, uh, they are all five to one. The pair, uh, the the three of them. Uh, Dame de Compagnie is uh, eleven to two. Was favourite uh, earlier on, but has drifted out a little bit. Cotto the King is eight to one. Sompter is nine to one. Grand Sancy is ten to one. Of all the gin joints is 12 to 1 and bigger prices the rest. Now, when the running order came through for tonight's show, uh, we, uh, we were going to skip this race altogether and just focus on the other uh, six. But the man to my left was absolutely adamant that we talk about it. So the pressure is on you, Paul. 
uh, because uh, I assume you fancy one in this. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, opener. I wanted to kick out the forerunner race later on, but apparently it's your bit of the day in it. So we've, you know, we're going to squeeze this in, so we better hurry up, I suppose. Yeah, no, I'm just a big fan of Killer Clown in this race. I thought he got, you know, I mean, obviously he, he's he's shortened a lot <laughs> since since I first latched onto him, but but I thought he got forgotten after finishing sixth in the in the old Rome Chase. Now. He may well have needed that run. He also looked as though it was a bit on the sharp side for him because they went slow and then really quick. And, um, but he wasn't actually beaten that far, only around 12 lengths. That race has worked out just staggeringly well, hasn't it? I mean, <coughs> Itchy Feet has actually run a cracker. He was second to, uh, to run second to Braveman's game. He, look, he looks an absolute superstar. But Midnight Shadow uh, has come out and won the Paddy Power. Fanny and Destival destroyed his field at, at, at Newbury this afternoon. Uh, and it's just a really, really strong piece of form. I don't see this race being anywhere near as good. He's back on the same mark as when he was second in the Greatwood Gold Cup over two and a half mile here in March. And I, you know, I think he's got an absolutely cracking chance. Cheek pieces have gone out. I hope they work better than they worked on Paisley Park. But you know, I thought that was a bit strange with Paisley Park going on. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm you not, talk about not earlier, sure but, that. Uh... Not, not sure that really suited him. I thought for one minute he was really enjoying it, but then. You know, you've got a horse that sort of tends to like running past horses, doesn't he? You know what I mean? And it, it was a weird one. But I think Kid Killer Clown is, you know, for this race, I think he's, he's, he's one of the best handicapped horses in the race, potentially. Um, I see the dangers being Kaluki, uh, who has run really well here three times last year. And possibly Cap Course, if he's back, he won it three years ago as a, as a five-year-old. But, I mean, he hasn't run for a year. But, um, yeah, I, I think Killer Clown would be, you know, very hard to kick out of frame. Yeah, killer clown out of that uh, lane tree form. And he was, uh, he was still on the bridle turning to the home straight, but uh, he, he blew up. It was first time wind up as well, so uh, maybe he, uh, he might well uh, remember now that he can uh, breathe and get home and it might make a difference. Cheap pieces on, yard are in form, 27% strike rate with chasers this year for the uh, Lavelle team, so uh, plenty of hope for killer clown. He has been well supported in the market, but uh, plenty of challenges as well. As uh, Keels has mentioned, Kaluki, who's got good form around here, Cap Course, who won this, uh, uh, I think it was back in, back in 2018. He's only three pounds high and we've barely seen him since uh, and of course down to Compagnie not sure which way that one's going to go in the market currently drifting but um, uh, a very talented hurdler uh, Tom so plenty to uh, to like here but uh, I'm in agreement with uh, with Keels with Killer Clown what did you like? Uh, I thought you, Keels made a perfectly good case for Killer Clown the only thing I'd say is wind up cheap pieces uh, it's not something that I particularly like to see on any horse it makes me think that Emma Lavelle thinks there's something up with him uh, he's not trying very hard. Having said that, the handicapper, as Keels pointed out, given him a very good chance. He likes the track. Distance is fine. Everything's right for him. If he's not got any issues, I think he's got a very good chance. Uh, I thought right down the bottom had a chance. I mean, this I thought this was the hardest race on the card, honestly, if truth be told. I thought you could give a chance to Kaluki, Damda, Compagnie, Cap Course, all of them. Uh, Court Master was the one that caught my eye at the prices. I, I see he's been nibbled at in the betting, but he always wins first time out. He was favourite for this race last year after a, after a string of uh, good runs. He didn't run up to scratch, I didn't think, but he's had a wind up. Uh, he's back on the same mark and he always wins first time out. So at a big price, I thought Court Master would go well, but you know it's very competitive. I get the killer clown argument uh, clearly. Uh, I think he's probably the one to beat, but I do think it's more competitive than... Well, look at the price. We all know it's very competitive, so I would throw a few quid maybe each way at Courtmaster down the bottom. OK, a uh, quick word on the uh, the Irish Raider, of course, the uh, Sompteur, Henry de Bromhead, Rachel Blackmore, we yeah. haven't seen since uh, disappointed at Galway. Yeah, I backed him at Galway. He didn't jump a fence. He was, it was one of the worst jumper performances I've, I've, I've seen. In, 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 you know, from, you know, yeah, that was Galway, and they, they come at you very quickly at the start of the Galway plate. He just got completely out of rhythm and jumped appallingly. Uh, he's got a race in him. I'm not sure he's... His form entitles him to be, you know, to win this. But, he, but you know, he's obviously he's similar owner to Eclat de Rear, isn't it? So same owner as Eclat de Rear, not a similar one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's obviously here, you know, they've, they've, they've targeted the meeting and I expect him to run well. But I, I mean, on, on what he's shown so far, I think he's got a few two, two pounds too many. OK, uh, there we go then. And uh, So Tom thinks it might well be the, uh, the toughest race of the uh, the day. Uh, and as you said, there's a few uh, quirky sorts. 13 run here. Five of them are, have had uh, wind ops. We've got horses coming back off seasonal uh, reappearances, having to bounce back. There's uh, There are plenty of uh, holes in a few of these, uh, David. But uh, it's already been a fairly uh, lively market. Like I said, down to company was clear favourite uh, when I looked earlier on, and a few of those uh, have, uh, have shortened. Um, what did you make of the race, and where's the money going? Yeah, four places each way in this varied. I mean, look, five to one co-favourites of three tells you how tricky and how competitive this is. 
Uh, Capcourt and Dam de Compagnie, of course, both owned by J.P. McManus. They run in the Peter O'Sullivan colours in this race tomorrow, named in honour of Peter O'Sullivan. There's always a feeling that you know, J.P. really wants to win this race. Um, he's got three. He's got a big price one outsider as well. But at the moment, his two are being largely ignored because of the money for Kaluki and Killer Crown. Um, but at one again, at a big price, I think it's that sort of race. If you can get four places each way, which obviously you can with Coral. Uh, Espoir de Tai at uh, around 16 to 1. He beat uh, Kaluki, I mean, very narrowly here uh, last season. They're off the same terms today. He warmed up with a, a th third place. It was decent enough at Chepstow last time. Stepping up two furlongs shouldn't be a hindrance, hopefully. So, I'd say, in a, in a tricky and competitive opener, Espoir de Tai each way for me. OK, wide open stuff then. And again, uh, same with the uh, the commenters as, uh, as well. Plenty of uh, people going with uh, a few. Although Tom Leach uh, and uh, Najinsky uh, agree with uh, uh, with the uh, the, uh, the two gentlemen in the studio, going with the Killer Clown at Bigger Odds. Uh, and uh, in fact, to be fair, quite a few Killer Clown uh, tips. Uh, but Cormac Flanagan says, is Killer Clown really that well handicapped? Still a stone higher in the handicap than his last winning mark. So... Uh, uh, quite a few people uh, with angles in this opener. It is a tough one. Uh, Keels, uh, we are with? Yeah, I'm pretty confident Killer Clown's going to run a big race. OK, Killer Clown. Tom? Uh, I'm going to throw a few quid on the bottom on Courtmaster. OK, and David? Uh, Courtmaster is also 16 to 1, should add, but Espoir de Taille each way for me. There we go. Tough little race then at uh, Newbury Far, that uh, one fifteen. But uh, plenty in with chances as uh, we move on to uh, a race that, um, if anything, is uh, is just as difficult here. Uh, we are over hurdles so far this two and a half mile handicap, and uh, again, there's been money for uh, Masters Legacy, which sends him into favouritism for the Philip Hobbs team. Seven to two. Lacale's article is four to one. Glory and Fortune is seven to one. Uh, Calvados is eight to one with Chitabello at nines. Boreham Bill tens and some tens. Earl of the Cotswolds at 11 to 1 then here for this 150 over at Newbury. 11 of them running. You've got a few horses uh, stepping up in trip after decent form over two miles. The likes of Masters Legacy and Glory and Fortune. You've got a, a horse with a very similar profile to uh, uh, to Champ, who won this a few years ago in the shape of Lacale's article. Three runs over hurdles and he makes his handicap debut. And you've got old boys like Chitabello and Boreham Bill. Tom, again, another tough little race. What did you come up with? Yeah, really, really interesting race, though. Uh, Lacal's article is a really strange one, because if you'd had said he would be 4-1 to one to win this off a mark of whatever he is now, uh, 129, when he won his maiden hurdle here last year, everyone has said, you're mad. He looked a really, really good horse, but the form of that race has worked out awfully, and he's run two bad races since. Uh, he pays your money, takes your chance. For me, I've got to take him on, because he's got nothing like the form of some of the others in here, but... On what he showed in his maiden hurdle, you could see him, you know, being stone better than his handicap mark. So he's a tricky one to uh, to, to weigh out. I want to take him on. Master's Legacy is obvious, isn't he? Because he's up in trip. Philip Hobbs won the handicap hurdle at Newbury today. Uh, he's going to enjoy the step up to two and a half miles. Just the price has gone for now. There was two in there I liked. I, liked, I thought the solid one undoubtedly is glory and fortune. I think the form of his Welsh champion hurdle win is excellent. You know, Don Levant's in there. Uh, he beat, he won it easily, then went to the Greatwood and he was going fine and he smashed into the second last and lost all chance. He still stayed on to finish sixth. I think without that mistake, he would have been third, maybe fourth. He's running off a lower mark here in a worse race and he's going to enjoy the step up in trip. I just thought he was certain to run well and he's sort of one of those horses that people feel they've got a handle on. I'm not sure they have. I think he's too big a price. And the other one, Following on from the Don Lamont Vont theme is uh, Isabel Williams. <coughs> excuse me, Isabel Williams again. And Sam love this horse. I thought he was a, a really out. I, I, I thought he was going to be chasing this year because I really liked him when he beat Didero Valleys at the Taunton or somewhere, and he was really impressive with his jumping. But to come back over hurdles, I presume Evan Williams is trying to take advantage of his good mark. And I thought he ran really well at Kempton. He always needs his first run. Evan Williams always targets a big race with a horse having a prep run. He ran really well that day. He's waited to beat uh, the, the Nichols horses at the top or, or waited to go close to Calvert Dodge or whatever it's called. And I just thought at around 14 to 1, 12 to 1, whatever he is, I thought he was going to go really well with Isabel Williams taking five off. And I just thought those were my two against the field. I get Masters Legacy. I get the Cal's uh, article. But I thought this was, this, was, this was a good betting race. I like Glory and Fortune and Ansam. 
Okay, a couple against the field then far for Tom uh, and Sam, uh, who uh, should come on for that uh, that run. It worked for Tom last week with the Williams uh, uh, combination, and it could well again. And Glory and Fortune, who's uh, a seven to one shot uh, here, uh, running the the Great Wood, as you said. This this race was won by Old Guard after coming uh, out of the the Great Wood after finishing third as well. So it has been done in the past few years. And uh, uh, we were talking about him off uh, off air kills. He uh, he looks like he'll definitely improve with a step up. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, you know, I, Tom said everything um, uh, about glory and fortune that I was going to say. Basically, I, I really loved his chance. Um, I'm just surprised he's drifted. Mm. He's been very weak in the market all day. In fact, I backed him earlier on with one form. They pushed him out and wouldn't let me have any on at the bigger price afterwards. I was rather annoyed about that. But um, yeah, that six, that great was a miles better race than this. Miles better, and he is, you know, he's a very very decent horse when he when he gets it right he can be a bit clumsy he got those three the last three he didn't actually take right the second last was particularly bad he also went around the outside yeah. now that is definitely the place to be when the ground's bottomless at Cheltenham but I'm not sure I'm not sure it is when when, when it's good ground certainly uh, not through the entire race yeah, exactly. challenge yeah, there, yeah, sure, you're, chuck, you know, you're chucking away loads of ground so I, I think he's miles better than that and you know he beat Don Levant really easily uh, Leon Cavallo split soaring glory and, and, and Boot Hill. Who, you know, Leon Cavallo was was uh, second in that race. Uh, you know, and, and I saw third in that race. Don Levant second. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really, really solid piece of form. I can't understand why he's drifting. He's the only bet for me. If Bowen Bill's price had stood up uh, for a bit longer, I'd have been interested in him. But he's come right down now because I thought he's quite eye catching behind Calvin Dowd. He wasn't beaten far. He was only fifth, uh, and he won the Lanzarote last year, sixty six to one, if you remember. Um, I think he's got a, he's got a shout. Okay, but you uh, you you seem quite disappointed. You didn't get to extol the virtues of glory and fortune before Tom did. Well, no, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, of course. <laughs> Listen, you know, we, we steal each other's thunder every now and again, don't we? Yeah. When we land on the same one, I think Tom uh, and I will admit we've probably got an awful record when we both land on the same one. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. But yeah, it's you know, I think you know, Tom basically said it all. He's got a, he's got a cracking chance. I just can't understand the drift. Yeah. Although I would say that I think pretty much everything's drifted because the money is continu is just coming in for Masters Legacy and everything yeah, else has been pushed out. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, was yeah. seven to one. Wasn't it he? is. You know, these drifts are all about market reactions, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, at the end of the day, and the cow's article has come back in again yeah. uh, as we speak. He's now, he's now seven to two. Of course, you know, I mean, Nicky Henderson stable saw. He says he's, a ch he's going chasing this season. So whether this is to blow the cobwebs away or take advantage of a handicap mark of one two five, but I mean, if you thought he was well handicapped over hurdles and you want to send him chasing, why not send him in a handicap with one two five? Yeah. Okay. Lacale's article then is a four to one shot, but uh, yeah, we're all aboard Glory and Fortune. I think uh, we uh, we had a, a, a runner at uh, Cheltenham a few weeks ago where we all agreed, uh, all four of us. So that's three of us so far for Glory and Fortune. So what happened to that one? It won. Oh, did it? It did. <laughs> Oh, you were, yeah, that was the week you were off, wasn't oh, it? I was, you off. Were off. I was off, yeah, I put a buckers on it, obviously. <laughs> but uh, it's no pressure, David, but um, like I said, it's happened once in the history of this programme. Glory and fortune, three votes for it. What are you going for? Oh, you'll be delighted I'm not going to go for it, uh, which, which is a good thing for backers of glory and fortune. I mean, you, first of all, you said it there, Ross, the reason why a few of these towards the head of the betting have drifted is because Masters Legacy is 5-1 to one into 7-2 to two just in the last couple of hours or so, so... Don't be too put off by those others just being eased slightly. There is money for Bore and Bill and Sam both been back to, to larger prices. But the one I like as one that has gone for a walk in the market since this afternoon is Earl of the Cotswolds. I think he's in good heart. He improved from his first run to win at Weatherby well. He's up seven for that, but I'm hoping he can take that in his stride. And actually, he's now getting to, a, say, around 11 to 1 mark. Sort of decent each way price there. So, yeah, I'm not going to go with glory and fortune, but that is good news for the other three of you. Okay, so like I said, I still think, you know, when all four of us get together, but it'll happen, it'll happen, I'm sure. Uh, Glory and Fortune is 7 to 1 shot. Earl of the Cotswolds is 11 to 1. Uh, you at home, Tom Leach says, uh, I give Chittabello a chance. Glory and Fortune for Dante, 44. Nijinsky also likes Glory uh, and uh, and Fortune. Uh, and uh, other uh, selections uh, here. Earl of the Cotswolds, good each way play. Uh, and a, a few others uh, as uh, well. So uh, again, uh, plenty of people on the uh, the chat agreeing with this. It's, it, it's never like this. Normally they're, uh, they're telling us we're, uh, we're we're talking absolute nonsense, but people getting on board the uh, the selection. So I don't know whether that uh, that bodes well or not, but we'll we will soon see. Uh, Glory and fortune a seven to one shot. Earl of the Cotswolds eleven to one. But all the money for Masters Legacy at the top of the betting for Philip Pomps at seven to two. Two from Newbury, and hopefully we'll get some action from Newcastle. Like I said, the uh, 
uh, the rain and the wind in particular really uh, wreaking havoc uh, on the uh, the northeast. So uh, fingers crossed the uh, the fighting fifth card gets the uh, the go ahead because uh, it is a decent card uh, and uh, we've got the the rehearsal chase of course a staying handicap chase which always throws up a, a dramatic finish. Of course, won last year by York Hill, the year before that taking risks. Uh, in a, uh, a dramatic circumstances as well, so age is certainly not a barrier to this uh, this victory. But uh, a, a youngster at the top of the betting here, the Ferry Master, four to one. I write is fives, Glen fours are sixes, Dingo dollar sixes, seven to one Spirit of the Games, nine to one Cool Mix, eleven to one Good Boy Bobby, and fourteen to one Bar those. Uh, the key piece of form to this race, uh, Keels, appears to be the Scottish National. Nearly every horse in here finishing the first six or seven yeah, in that race. Absolutely, yeah. And you've got uh, to try and work yeah. out which and order. Obviously, taking risks. Won this after he won, after he won the Scottish yeah. National a couple yeah. of years ago. So yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I like the one that finished um, best in the in the Scottish National. Dingo Dollar finished second. Uh, that was his second run for Sandy Thompson. Uh, the first was um, over. Uh, on, on, on this track, and he jumped like a stag, and he won very, very easily. He's obviously on a, on a much higher mark now. But I, I just like the way, it liked his return uh, at Kelso. He was only four for five to Empire de Mould. He was, he was progressive, but again, he, he jumped really well out front. He just got tired. Lots of Tom, Sandy Thompson's horses need a run. Uh, the tongue tie that he wore both times last season wasn't on. It, it's back now. Uh, I think he's going to go really well. It might. It could easily be, be between him and, uh, and Thompson's other one, the Fairy Master. But, you know, the Dingo Dollar has been a bigger price all, all the way. And I just think, you know, there, there's a lot of rain forecast with the wind. Mm. Uh, and there are some suspect stayers, I think. Um, I mean, Glenn Forster, you saw Glenn, by the way, Glenn Forster went off at Ascot last time. And don't get me wrong, that was a really, really good run. Yeah, how the hell did he uh, finish fourth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's obviously gone miles too fast. I backed him for the Arkle a few years ago. Um, but I just wonder if rain gets into the ground whether he'll stay. He's obviously fantastically well handicapped on what he has done. Uh, uh, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But it is Dingo Dollar for me. I just like the horse and I think he'll get a lot in trouble. Okay. Dingo Dollar then is currently a 6-1 to one shot. Uh, like the Ferry Master, trained by Sandy Thompson, whose horses are in uh, good form. And uh, like the Ferry Master as well, seem to need that uh, first run of the season. Uh, but uh, again, quite a few of these... Uh, uh, in uh, in good nick and uh, interesting run for I write as well, Tom. Of course, if uh, we were previewing this weekend last uh, year, we would have been talking about I write for the the Labrooks Trophy, but uh, a very uh, much uh, easier kind of assignment for him today, and he'll have plenty of fans at home. Yeah, you can make a case for all of them. I write definitely got a chance, hasn't he? On his best form from last year, he's obviously had the warm up run. Even nuts well at the top's got a chance. I thought this was really interesting. I. Uh, I don't know whether Keels was giving Glenn Forster a positive or a negative there. Uh, <laughs> it's I hard to say. Think, I like the horse, but I, I'm worried about his think stamina. I think he's got a good chance here. I really do. I, he won over three miles at Chepstow as a young horse for for Mick Shannon. Uh, as a you know, I know it was a lot work, lot less lesser race, but I thought he ran an amazing race at Ascot. And if you watch the video again, he's actually coming back. I think he would have been third again in a few more strides. I don't know what happened. It, I, I, I. I I reckon he just sort of got weird. It just sort of went lonely and on his own. I think three miles is, is is fine for him. I think he'll enjoy three miles. I think he'll enjoy any rap given the ground. And I just think he's an amazingly well handicapped horse. And if Charlie Longston's got him back to anywhere near he near, near where he is, and he's not given such a obviously forcing ride, I think he's got a good chance of making all here. I know he's got some pace pressure up front, but I don't think they'll be able to skip along like Glenn Forster can. And I I know he's look. He's six to one now. I think it was twelve to one a few, you know, a few hours ago. Uh, that's probably on the short side. But he, he, he's my fancy. I just think if there's one horse that's going to blow the race apart, it will be him. And that's I like looking at races like that. I like looking at trying to find the horse that can win by ten lengths rather than the one that might sneak home. And I think he's the one that can do it. He's just so well handicapped on what he did uh, as a young horse. And if he stays the trip, I don't think they'll catch him. Yeah, and we, I mean, I was talking um, about this off air in terms of, you know, handicap chases. I mean, two miles, two and a half miles, three miles, you name it. You get a horse who jumps boldly and, and goes on from the front. And, you know, you, you've won half the battle. How many of these races are won by prominent racers? Yeah, of course they are, because horses don't, you know, people say horses quicken up. They do this, they do that. Jump horses don't do that. They just get slower and slower. And so if you can get out front conserving energy, of course you've got an advantage. Uh question is, can he conserve the energy? Because he didn't do it at Ascot. And that's the problem. And he obviously was far too free, far too keen. I, I, he obviously blew everything else apart. Anything that went to with him was pulled up. I mean, that was how, what a great run it was from him. All the, all the, the first and the second came from way back, didn't they? To Larry came from miles behind to win the race. So they obviously went a strong gallop. If, 
uh, I think Aidan Coleman rides him to, tomorrow. If he conserves his energy and they get, he gets into a rhythm, I think he'll be hard to catch. I really do. Okay, Glenn Forsman, six to one. Yeah, I think I backed him for the Arkle. The, uh, the, I think it was Duke de Genevieve won, uh, and it was a, yeah, a very... So I told everyone he was the best jumper in the field, and he unseated at the second. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a form boost a couple of weeks ago, because <laughs> right. uh, Laylord Le- ran in that race as well, didn't yeah, he, back in the other yeah. day? So, yeah. um, oh, time flies, doesn't it? But uh, Glenn Forster, six to one for, uh, for Tom. And uh, there's been quite a bit of money for Glenn Forster, uh, David, of course, uh, caused by, uh, by Tom a little bit, but uh, uh, a lively market for the rehearsal. Yeah, uh, I was another Glenn Forster disciple off the back of Kiel's, actually. He was such a fan of him back for that arc. So this is bringing back all sorts of painful memories. He's been very well back for this one. As has Dingo Dollar. I like Sandy Thompson's other one, the Ferry Master, down there off the bottom there, fourth in the Scottish National last season. I'm hoping he'll come on for his run last time, third at Musselburgh. But if you fancy the Sandy Thompson, either of them, Dingo Dollar or Ferry Master, he, they, he is the subject of our first prize boost for the evening. It was nine to four that he wins this rehearsal chase and that's gone out to three to one so you'll get them both running for you but as I say Glenn Forster very well backed as well today yeah Glenn Forster uh, quite a bit of money but Sandy Thompson uh, two in this with big chances three to one out from nine to four to win the rehearsal chase Uh, uh, of course the ferry master and uh, Dingo Dollar uh, and uh, we uh, went quite close with one of his uh, last week at uh, Haydock in fact that was the one that uh, Tom's two tips beat, wasn't it? Bass yeah, Rock, you ran a cracker. Don't remind me about that, will you? Sorry, mate. There you go. We got the TriCast. So. <laughs> remind me. Yeah, I can say, remind, remind me. You. Yeah, I had to send him one of those texts saying, well done, Tom, great tipping. <laughs> Through gritted teeth, yeah. But, uh, Through gritted teeth. You've got to give him one. You've got to give him one. Oh, uh, but uh, Scott Innes says, Glenn Forster wins, move on. Um, Tom Leach says, Glenn Forster needs a lobotomy. I don't think... Um, <laughs> I don't, do they declare that in the race card? I don't know, but um, <laughs> uh, it's a bit harsh. L1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I write is a class above these, says uh, says Kess. And uh, uh, Harry Lee says, Dingo Dollar wouldn't win if it started now. Oh, uh, well, we shall see. There you go, Kills. Well, we'll you'll certainly find out. That's the rehearsal chase. Just a quick mention. And the one, in fairness, uh, if it started now, it would get blown off the track, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, because there's a terrible time <laughs> to start right now. Won't be able to see a thing. It'll end up... Uh, uh, end up in the sea. Um, but um, we haven't mentioned Cool Mick, so I thought it was a little bit interesting. This horse ran uh, behind York Hill last season in this race. I mean, you name, if you've got a checklist of what could go wrong in a race, um, pretty much everything went wrong for Cool Mick. He loves this track. He, he's never out of the, uh, the frame at this, uh, this track. Of course, he was also involved uh, in the Scottish Grand National. I don't think he quite got home uh, in, uh, on that, and he was uh, behind definite plan in a good race at Cheltenham. I think, how many places was it, David? Uh, four places in that rehearsal. There we go. Nine to one then. Nine to one each way. Four places. Cool mix for me uh, in rehearsal chase. As we move on to Newbury, uh, where we have an intermediate hurdle with a, a small field, but some good horses. And uh, like I said, I thought we might uh, rattle through this, but the more I looked at it uh, on the the train down here, the more I uh, quite fancied one in here. Uh, but the the favourite here is Soaring Glory, six to five. Gowell Road, three to one. Captain Morgue, seven to two. And one more for the road at five to one here. So just four horses, uh, but all of them in pretty good nick. Uh, all of them coming into this uh, on the, at the very top of their form, uh, uh, Tom. And uh, I think Soaring Glory is the best horse in the race for sure, but Kept coming back to Captain Morgs. He'd uh, he stepped back in trip. He uh, he beat a nice horse uh, last time out uh, in the shape of Gary Claremont. They were miles clear of Leon Cavallo, who is aligned through pretty much every piece of hurdle in form going over the past 18 months. And Nicky Henderson's got a very good record in this. I thought Captain Morgs could be well handicapped. Uh, I'm sure he is well handicapped, but I don't think he's as well handicapped as Soaring Glory. I think that's the, that will end up, Soaring Glory will end up being the Shortest priced British trained runner in the champion hurdle, in my opinion. I think he's I think he was seriously impressive the way he went through the race at Ascot the other day. I think he's left last year's four miles behind. And I think he's really good. I think he'll win this and he'll end up being, as I say, the shortest price or British trained horse in the champion hurdle. That's my opinion. But he's no value at what is he, six to five, even money there. I get your Captain Morgs thing, but for me it's all about soaring glory. I just think he'll win. Sorry, Ross. That's, that's all right. That's absolutely, that's absolutely fine, mate. I'll, uh, I'll play the forecast just to yeah, be safe. Keep saying that. The price will drift. That's what you want. You want everybody to disagree with you at the end of the day, don't you? Well, especially right, Tom, uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah, he yeah, quite yeah. heavily influences yeah, markets. So yeah. keep saying it, Tom. Keep saying <laughs> it. And then maybe we, we can get out to fives for Captain Morgs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I absolutely agree with Tom, though, as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think, it, guys, you know, keep saying it. Look, I think he's, a, you know, he, he was really impressive. I thought you might have easily ask it. Um, Gowell Road is going to have to really go for it if he's got any chance of being because he's not going to outspeed him is he but that'll suit Soaring Glory to get a lead 
Uh, and yeah, I just think he's got too much speed for him. I, I expect him to win. Okay, there we go. Uh, so uh, I'm with Captain Morgs. The, uh, uh, the two top tipsters are very much uh, firmly with the favourite, taking me on. David Stevens, uh, are you on my side or are you taking the side of these two scoundrels? <laughs> no, I'm joining the scoundrels for this one, Ross. You're standing really alone. Surprised. Never yeah. <laughs> there was a scoundrel on this podcast. Oh, I think that, uh, <laughs> th that was full of whiskey behind you when this, uh, this show started, I'm... David. So. <laughs> I'm in the soaring glory camp here. I think he's got much more to come. I was just looking actually at his champion hurdle price. He's a 33 to 1 sort at the moment. So maybe that's what we should be looking at. But he is the subject of our second price boost. They're coming thick and fast tonight. Soaring glory to win this race by over five lengths was 11 to 4 out to 7 to 2. So that might be the way of getting with him. I say I think he's I think he's a good thing here. And yeah, but. Listen, Ross, all this is going to do is should make you feel more confident about Captain Morgs. Yeah, I mean, they're absolutely the worst bets uh, are when the world and the wife uh, say, yeah, I see what you, I see what you, see what you fancy here, because uh, undoubtedly they always, uh, they always shorten. So thanks for disagreeing, guys. Uh, can't wait for Captain Morgs to beat Soaring Glory by a short head. Uh, OK, moving on then from that intimate hurdle, although everyone, uh, Soaring Glory says Natalie. Um, Soaring Glory should be too good, said Stevens. I uh, have to agree with Tom, says uh, Harry. Soaring Glory, a class above these. So no one agrees with me. Just how I like it. Lovely stuff. Right, let's crack on uh, and uh, go on to the big race of the afternoon. The Labrooks Trophy uh, at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We could well see a uh, potential uh, graded uh, uh, star of the future because we've got a lot of uh, unexposed types coming over for uh, this, uh, this race. And like I said, the last few years, it's been a little bit below par, but it'd be nice. Uh, to see a, a Bobsworth or a Native River or even a, you know, a settle for a mad place uh, for, for this. But uh, Eclat de Rear is 7-2 to two and has shortened up at the top of the market here for the uh, De Bromhead team. On the ropes is 11-2. to two. Uh, Fiddler on the roof, 13-2. to two. Enrillo, 13-2. to two. And then a jump out to 12-1. to one. Bar those, De Machine, Kitty's Light, Cloth Cap and Remastered all at 12-1. to one. Uh, Name check a few others because it is a very, very good race. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Potterman in there as well, Copperhead uh, and uh, some outsiders at bigger prices as well. Lights are Cloud again, uh, Glenn, Mr. Malarkey, uh, and unexposed types like uh, one more flurry, and uh, and also Canelo. So uh, interesting little race this at, uh, at Newbury. Like I said, we were, we're saying this is a, a really good renewal on paper. Talk to us about the Irish challenges first. Yeah, well, I think me and Tom are poles apart on this one because he seems to like the Irish ones because he's I know he's tipped on the ropes and he post. Um, I, I found them surprisingly easy um, to oppose. I mean, obviously the Irish have only won the race once in forty years. Yeah. Uh, and they absolutely dominate the market. Eclat de Rear, Heavy de Bromhead, is, is on record as saying he's a heavy topped horse who won't want good ground. And, you know, unless they do get a, fit, a bit of rain tomorrow, it's really, really going to be windy. It's, they're not going to be knocking them about like, like at Newcastle, but it's going to be windy all night. I mean, it could be rattling by three o'clock. Mm. Uh, and I just don't think that's going to suit him. Um, he's run small field races in bog, boggy fields, basically. Um, it could be a very good horse, but I mean, he's you know he's now seven to two, uh, and I think that's a terrible price. On the ropes, just worries me that he's only once been asked to jump over obstacles on a left-handed track, and he pulled up. Now it was put down as a breathing issue at the time, but I mean, he did not jump or travel from the off. It might be nothing. It's eighteen months ago. Uh, he looked very good when he won uh, when he won the Munster National, which obviously Total Recall won as well. But he's twelve pound higher. Would you? Would you make Wave of the Sea 11 to 2 off, say, £8 higher? You only won by two and a half lengths or so. Like, you know, I wouldn't. I mean, all the runners that have come out, it's a, it's a strange one because I thought the speed figure's really good, a really impressive um, performance. Oh, you know, to, just to be honest, if he, hadn't, if he hadn't hit the second last, I think he'd have won a fair bit more easily yeah. than he did. So, you know, I don't, don't want to knock him too much. But I just thought he's just, just a case of being too short. I thought Enrillo would be, was probably the one to beat at the front of the market. But I keep coming about the cloth cap. I don't think he should be double the price. I know, you know, you've got to be a very, very good horse to win this race twice because you're talking Denman, Arkle, well, Mandarin, a, like you know what I mean. So as a nine-year-old as well. So uh, as a nine-year-old, but I mean he absolutely tore him apart last year. I know he's a lot higher in the handicap, but he tore him apart at Kelso after that as well. He was bowling along in the national, really loving it and you know, trading really short. Uh, and then as we saw with the Patrick Mullins piece a few weeks later in the racing post, he's, he's come alongside him. Said I heard him make a noise. I know he's not going anywhere. They gave him a wind up and he jumped for fun on his return at Cheltenham and although he got tired, he didn't cut out like he did at Aintree. I thought it was a perfect, I thought they'd be delighted with that run. He'd be absolutely bang on for this, the ground will be in his favour. He'll jump a lot of them silly 
Um, and again, it, it, as Tom always says, it is about getting into rhythm. Like, you know, I mean, he's one of the horses you can fancy getting into a rhythm. You've got extra places. I thought 12 to 1 was a, a very, very fair price. I've backed an outsider called Canelo for uh, Alan King. Um, he's obviously won this was smad place a few years ago. He ran Dingo Dollar in it twice, finished fifth and third. And, and Canelo, he, he needed that run of Bangor last time. He needed his first run last year. And then, and then he bolted up at Aintree. And then he ran second in, at this meeting to Captain Dunor, who uh, I think was £19 higher a couple of months later. Mm -hmm. Finished second to Royal Guide in the... Uh, at Kempton uh, and you know I think that's a tidy bit of form at the track on decent ground and I just sort of 33 to 1 is one of those that could could, could definitely come through for the places. Okay so uh, a, a few against the Irish challenge then uh, for for Paul with uh, with Cloth Cap and uh, and Canelo against the uh, the fields here but yeah the money keeps coming in for for Eclat de, de Rio uh, Tom. Are you worried about um, the uh, the ground conditions because of course he's I mean his one run on good or good to soft was uh, an unseated uh, challenge, so we can hardly uh, blame the ground for that. But uh, he has so far applied his trade in pretty desperate conditions. Not at all. I think he'll love the ground. Uh, that's my opinion, but uh, obviously he's, he's not proven on it. Uh, I just don't see it being that far. I mean, it looks like good ground to me. If you can't run on that ground, you can't run on any ground, in my opinion. Uh, I just think, uh, look, if I, as I say, I like looking at races and trying to find grade top hand, you can like find the grade one horse in them. Now, I could be completely wrong, and I understand that they are shorter prices now than they were, but about 24 hours ago, Fiddler on the Roof and then Rillo were almost the same price as Eclat de Rear and, and uh, on the ropes. Now they've shortened up a bit, the two at the top, and that's because I think people are expecting them to, you know, people have like, catched on to them. I don't think Bet365 form at, at uh, Sandown is anywhere near uh, equivalent of what Eclat de Rira and on the ropes are going to be capable of, of uh, producing as they go on through the season. I, we Obviously, we don't know that. That's why they are people like Keels who are more into the, to the minutiae of form will be keen to take them on because actually on, on what they've shown, there is, there is reasons to take them on. They're not top of the ratings. Of course, they're not. They haven't had the chance. But I'm just looking from my prism and thinking that if there is a horse that's going to be lining up in the Gold Cup, it's going to be Eclat de Rear, and there's no chance any of the others have got a chance of running in the Gold Cup with any sort of chance. Maybe on the ropes, if uh, if uh, things went his way in this race, did a total recall, who was travelling really well after winning this race and the Munster National, he was travelling well in the Gold Cup and fell three out. But I don't see any of the others being in their, in their vicinity in terms of potential. Now, you, it's the way you look at races, isn't it? You either back potential or you back form. I tend to try and in incorporate both at the moment. Eclat de Rea hasn't got the form, but I think come three o'clock, three oh five tomorrow, you might be sitting there thinking, Jesus, this horse is gonna this is all Scott Chance in the Gold Cup. And that's if that's the case, then the five to one that was available earlier in earlier in the day was, I thought, a very fair price. Seven to two's clearly on the short side. And if he if those two don't win, then I think it's wide open. I totally get cloth cap, don't get me wrong. If, if those if that Eclat de Rea wasn't wasn't running in the race, I would have been on cloth cap without a shadow of a doubt. I just think he's the type of horse that's going to get in a great rhythm and bowl along in front, and they're going to have to come and get him. Uh, whether they can, I think, I, you know, if, if there's nothing very good in there, which there might not be, if the two Irish horses aren't brilliant, then I think he's got a massive chance. But as it stands, I think the two of them will run away from run away from the English horses. And if you wanted one at a big price, I thought Venetia Williams' horse, Cloudy Glen. But around 40 to 1 might hit the frame. Always goes well fresh. Won the uh, Southern National or the, something at Fontwell last year on his on his seasonal appearance by 15 lengths. And then ran second in the Kim Muir uh, at the festival off this mark. The Venetia Williams horses we saw today are running really well fresh. He's got a good record in these staying chases. Oublon de Zobo, I think, finished placed in a couple of times. I could just see him finishing. I don't know how many places Dave's playing. Six, six, is it? But I can see him running into the into the into the frame at a massive price as well. But for me, uh, I think it's all about the Irish horses. I think Eclat de is going to win. Okay, Eclat de is a seven or two shot here. Uh, I'm not sure how many uh, you're paying personally, Dave. Uh, but I think Coral <laughs> as a as a company are going five places. But I'm oh, sure yeah. if, if Tom wants to back it to uh, to finish sixth, you'll uh, you'll oblige. But um, uh, a word on the market. But also, I'm going to throw it to you, David, because um, the uh, the one trainer who who, who loves a, a horse in this race, of course, is Colin Tizard, who's uh, who's got a cracking chance with a couple. Fiddler on the roof uh, is a, a 13 to two shot. And I also thought it was interesting with Copperhead, who, I mean, everything went wrong last year. But you can say that for well, nearly every Tizard chaser, can't you? 
Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you really do put a line through everything that, that they ran last season, as we saw with uh, Lost in Translation last Saturday. Yeah, there's no question that they're, they're resurgent this year. And they got three chances here. Mr Malarkey's the other one. So, uh, clearly, the leading contender of their three is Fiddler on the Roof. And the feeling coming, obviously, you know, we sponsored the yard. Joe spoke to him this morning for the blog. The feeling is, if this horse is as good as they think and hope he is, he's got to go really close off his mark in this race tomorrow. He's relatively easy to back just this afternoon, but that's because this money has really come for Eclat de Rear in now to short of seven to two, as we can see there. Uh, I will give you six places each way, Tom, but good luck trying to get paid out. Coral are giving everyone else five places each way on this Sorry. one. Sorry. Hopefully that's quite all right. Not a problem at all. Uh, I'm, I'm with Kills on this. I'm a massive Cloth Cat fan. It's hard to think that 18 pounds higher last year would have stopped him in this race. And with five places each way, he, he's back. You know, it didn't work for him in the National, but he had a problem. They've had his wind checked. I, th I know the team down there at Jackdaws are very happy with him. And the £18, I think five places each way. I'd like to think that £18 rise won't have him too far away. So, But if you are in the Tom camp and you fancy these Irish runners, that's the next price boost for us tonight. It was 11 to 8 an Irish train winner of this race. They don't have a great record in it, but Total Recall, of course, did win it. But it's now two to one, an Irish train winner of this Labrooks trophy from 11 to 8. So that may be the way you go. You get the big two running for you. OK, there you go. Two to one from 11 to 8, an Irish train uh, winner. Uh, like I said, I, I, do, I quite fancy Copperhead to run a good race here uh, for the, the Chisard team. Like I said, you could put a line through that, uh, that, uh, that season last year. Um, I know that Ascot Grade Two, you, it's not, that, that performance isn't as good as it necessarily looked, but um, significantly better handicap than it's uh, than it was in this race last year. And clearly, that that, that run behind um, a, a Champ, where it fell and it just ploughed through every single fence, that put a, a damper on the entire season. And he, he's an incredibly well handicapped horse, loves good ground, prominent race, and jumps really well. And he's only a seven-year-old. I thought I thought Copperhead was was overpriced, Keels. I mean, it could be if he comes back to form. It's one of those, isn't it? And I suppose you have got the angle with, well, you know, all of Tizard's are coming back to form. Lost uh, the translation, Fiddle on the Roof, Warlord, El Dorado Allen, all won first yeah, time out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, they could, they, you know, could do. I'm not going to, I'm not certainly not going to put you off a, a, a horse at a big but price. You're, you're absolutely not going to back him either. Uh, but I'm not going to back him either, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, who are you going to back at home? Let's have a, a look on the uh, the comments. Uh, we've uh, uh, Kess says cloth cap's got no chance. Fair enough, straight in. Uh, I think you got some chance, but uh, uh, off Will says bloke who said Dingo Dollar had no chance. <laughs> you're just picking on me. <laughs> it's just you. Yeah, I don't know what you've done to upset them, but uh, uh, it's uh, definitely gone against you. Uh, cloth cap must have an each way chance, though. Says Nick Dye. Yeah, good uh, man. So there you go. A few people uh, disagreeing. Um, Will Kitty like be too far back? I love the horse. Says Helen Sheridan. That's a Obviously, a, a bit of a problem at Newbury. You don't want to go too far back. Alan Keane, fullback, 50 to 1 each way. Again, the Gary Moore horses maybe um, a bit uh, a bit in and out a little bit, but he's another unexposed second season ch uh, chaser. Um, uh, Canelo has a fighting chance, uh, says uh, Neil Francis. Uh, Helen Sheridan likes remastered ground worry uh, as uh, well. And Natalie says Mullins, second and third strings uh, should not be ignored. So loads of opinions then in what looks like a fantastic Ladbrokes trophy. But Paul Keeley, what will you be backing? Uh, I have backed Cloth Cap and Canelo. Cloth Cap and Canelo. Uh, Tom, you are uh, very much in disagreement. I'm not in disagreement. I can totally understand both the cases for them. I just think that uh, I backed the two Irish horses when the weights came out, and I'm quite happy with the position I'm in. OK, uh, and I will, uh, I'll go with uh, two of Tizard's, Fiddler on the Roof uh, and uh, at Copperhead. A, against the field here for the Labrooks Trophy. David Stevens, what do you fancy? Uh, I'm a cloth cap fan in this race. Just one single, uh, one more line on Cophead, sorry. Joe did say he wished they'd been able to get a run into him this season. The ground has just not come for him. So that's just a slight concern. But as he said, a return to his best form off his mark would definitely put him in with the chances. So I can see your angle and don't be put off by it. OK, I won't be, but I might be ruining it after a few fences, but we'll see. Uh, Cracking renewal of the Lambrooks Trophy, feature race of the day tomorrow afternoon. We've got two more to preview, though, uh, over to, uh, to Newcastle, uh, where uh, we're going to challenge Tom's comment about Soaring Glory being the shortest price champion hurdler uh, from Britain here, because Epiton, of course, is 11-8 to 8 for the, uh, the Fighting Fifth, and we've got Montmorel at 2-1, to 1, So Royale at 5-1, to 1, Silver Streak 17-2, to 2, Not So Sleepy at 12s, and Voir de Rev at 150-1. to 1. First things first, David, do you have the champion hurdle betting now? Currently, what are Epiton and Montmorel in that anti-post betting? Uh, Epiton and Montmorel are both 16-1 to 1 for this champion hurdle at the moment. So, as things stand, they are shorter than Soaring Glory, but of course, that could all change after tomorrow. It could indeed. Uh, Tom, 
Um, Epitant, Mon Morale, or one of the old favourites, So Royal, a Silver Street. Maybe even not so sleepy if he uh, if he gets around. Well, what did you make of the fight in fifth? Uh, I thought Mon Morale had plenty on on his plate as a four year old uh, myself. Thought he was plenty short enough. Epitant, you're you're you're, you're banking on her coming back. Uh, she seemed to please anyone, everyone at home in the last few weeks or whatever, and I'm told she's working well with Buzz and all that. But I thought so, Royale. If the, if if the if the ground is good, I thought he had a, I thought he had an excellent chance. I think he's been in as good a form this season as I've ever seen him. I thought he might have actually won the champion chase last year if he hadn't been sort of taken out two out. I just think he's the most underrated horse in training. I hope he wins because I love him. And I think that it provided the ground. The, the monsoon doesn't turn up but it's a windy rather than the rainy day up at Newcastle I think 5-1 to one is a perfectly good bet perfectly reasonable price about him against Epitant OK, so we're on a 5-1 to one shot yeah, he really has um, found a new lease of life coming back over hurdles record on good ground hurdles uh, uh, over the past couple of years um, before he went chasing uh, second first first second first first so he does want uh, quicker ground, but he is uh, in very good form at the moment. Admittedly, he's not beat a great deal, so Royal on his last couple of starts. Um, he's beat Silver Streak, of course, who reopposes uh, here today, but Epitant has, has beaten both of those fairly comfortably. Fairly comfortably, yeah. I mean, no, I, I'm exactly, I'm in Tom's camp there, I love so Royal. You mean, you know, there's something wrong with you, don't if you don't, isn't there, really? Like, he's a, he's a tremendous little terrier. It is supposed to lash down as well as have all the wind, and that would make you worry. I mean, he has, you know, he, he's won good races on soft ground, but, yeah. he, you know, he is better. You know, I mean, he got beat by Irving in this race on soft ground, like, you know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, Irving wouldn't finish in the first seven, and there's only six runners, you know, <laughs> of, of this race. Like, you know, so, I mean, so that that would worry you, the, ground, the ground's an issue. Uh, again, totally with Tom. Mon Morale, um, you know, he's a four-year-old, give him seven pounds to a to a champion hurdle winner in Epitome because of the sex allowance. Um, you know, Racing Post rating, £16 to find with her. Like, you know, I mean, it's a huge amount. If you're backing that at two to one, you're taking an awful lot on trust. I know they think an awful lot of him, but how many four-year-olds have we seen not come up to scratch in, in, in these sort of races? It's just, you know, it's a massive ask to be that price. Like, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean, you know, might come out and blow them all out of the way. He looked very good last year, for sure, but... <sighs> Two to one, no thanks. I thought no, not so sleepy might actually steal it if he, you know, deigns to jump the first instead of throw the jockey off. Like he did that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, you know, I think he ran perfectly reasonably on the flat when we last saw him when he was second to Postilio, and uh, he's, you know, he's a talented animal when he's right, when he gets it right, uh, and he might just be able to steal it. Um, but you know, this is, you know. At five a race, isn't it? Like you know, I mean, if you're going to do that, if if you put me in a match with Mon Morale and Epitant, and let's say Epitant was you know based on those prices, four to six against eleven to ten, and then you know I'd be smashing Epitant all day long. Right, you know, eleven to eight is probably a very fair price about a favourite. Yeah, uh, Epitant then is. Uh, She's had a back operation apparently. Okay. Like you know, so add you know, I mean, we've had people down, you know, our Lambourne man. Uh, James Byrne saying that, you know, they are really, really happy with her. So, you know. the, the handicapper basically said that she regressed by a good eight pounds last, uh, last mm, year. Yeah, but she, you know, the mark she ran to on RPRs when she absolutely hacked up last year was the mark she's running off at the moment. So, I mean, if that's all she is, 154, that's enough with the seven pound weight allowance. You know what I mean? So yeah. she's going to take some beating. Just looking, the last uh, four-year-old to win this race, of course, was Countrywide Flame back in 2012. But in contrast, he was it was four runners that year, and he was the top rated. So yeah, what price was he? Uh, he was 11 of four. Was he? Is that all? Yeah, but, I mean, there's a, he was, yeah. Cinders and Ashes was the favourite that year, so it wasn't right. Get it? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a fantastic, uh, fantastic renewal. Um, but uh, Epitant is 11 to eight shot. We had a, a poll, of course, uh, from uh, from you watching at home. Who wins the Fighting Fifth uh, Hurdle? Epitant, 56 percent of people. So uh, very much a uh, uh, a good value. Better looks at things. Mon Morale, 22 percent. So Royal, 17 uh, percent uh, and three percent. Uh, the uh, the rest uh, comments uh, at uh, home. Uh, Alan Keane says, surely, surely Mon Morale is a champion hurdle horse. He just wins. Keel, someone's stealing your, stealing your, your catchphrases here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. And uh, another, uh, uh, if, uh, if Epitant or Mon Morale don't win easy, then the champion hurdle is a goner in November, says uh, Najinsky here. So uh, the fighting fifth hurdle then, uh, then David. It's, um, it's Epitant versus uh, a youngster who has to improve versus uh, uh, two horses in So Royale and Silver Streak have probably got their own... Fan clubs on uh, on Twitter somewhere. Not so sleepy, Mike Nick it. What a rev, 150 to one. Having a day out. It's a uh, it's an intriguing, if not a, a fun little field this year. 
Yeah, look, Epiton's easy to back at the moment, 11 to 8 from 6 to 5, and so Royal's out to 5 to 1 from 7 to 2 because they've come from Mon Morale. But earlier in the week, uh, Paul Nichols said that the Jerry Fielden was going to be the more likely target for this, but then there was some sort of admin error because of a race he'd won in in France at Ottawa. He couldn't run in the Jerry Fielden, so he's sort of been rerouted here. So I'm not sure, say, this this well, this clearly wasn't the first choice for Mon Morale, but he's been backed uh, as, if it, as if it has been. Uh, Epiton, look, she's first run back, but if... if all is well at home, then clearly that's a big tick. We know on her day she probably is the best of these. I'm just a massive So Royal fan as well. I think he never gets the credit, as the boys have said, and he's in great form this year. You could say Silver Street deserves a change of luck in this. He was run out of this at the start last year. But yeah, So Royal, 5-1 to one at the price. I'm happy to take a chance. But if you do like the favourite Epiton, and obviously in the poll they did, we've got another enhancement here, and it's Epiton to win by over four and a half lengths. Was three to one, but that's out to four to one. So four and a half lengths. Over four and a half lengths for Epiton here. You can get four to one now. Yeah, uh, she uh, she won it in uh, 2020, but four and a quarter length. So uh, it's an interesting choice of uh, of distance there, David. Well, that's the coral compilers for you. They like to be a little bit mischievous and just a little bit uh, of scoundrels. Let's put them in that camp. There we go. Well, we're all in that camp by the sounds of things. So uh, fighting fifth keels. Yeah, I think Epiton will probably win, but. Um... Just be contrary, and I'll have a tiny bit. I'm not so sleepy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Which, given you've been up since 4 a.m., is uh, quite the opposite. Uh, Tom, uh, if Storm R win or whatever it's called hits, <laughs> then uh, Epitant will win, and if it doesn't, I fancy So Royal. Okay, yeah, uh, David. Yes, I'll go with that. I'll go with the Storm forecast as well, and So Royal five to one at the price. I think is worth taking. Okay, and uh, Epitant's uh, 11 to 8 favourite here. I'm going to sit firmly on the fence. Absolutely no opinion whatsoever. But that's the joy of hosting. Uh, as we move on to the last race at uh, Newbury, the 3.35, uh, a two mile handicap chase uh, we've got. Uh, and we've seen some good ones recently. Uh, and uh, quite a few of them have uh, either been won by or certainly featured uh, Sam Thomas uh, Chasers. And Grey Diamond is another one at 9 to 2. Il Rodoto is 5 to 1. A Claire Dane is 6 to 1 with Frero Bamboo. Uh, Numitor 7, Sully Dock 8, Gumball 10s, Elusive Bell at 12 to 1 and bigger prices the rest. I'm going to come to you first, Kiels, because there was a race last oh. week, of course, uh, where most of us wanted to take on before midnight for the uh, this stable. Uh, he set steady for actions. He made all the running, just held on over at Ascot. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, he got lucky because, you know, he's not the quickest horse in the world. Tom was right about that, but they gave him such an easy time that he got away with not being that quick. He didn't actually jump that well, but he still won. Um, well, I mean, they've got, and they also got stolen silver. So, I mean, Sam Thomas. Yeah, he's got his fair share of two miles. Great Diamond ran really well um, to be third to Amula Gold mm -hmm. uh, in that race where they went off like bats out of hell. Uh, you know, and you know it was a good run. He's entitled to come on for it. But you know, if the ground was softer, I would be all over Eclair Danny. I mean, all over him. I think he made. I think he had a lovely return at Weatherby over two mile four, and I'm absolutely convinced he didn't stay. He, he travelled really strongly. Uh, he was you know, almost alongside the winner, good boy Bobby, who was very well handicapped uh, at the time. He was, all, he was alongside him almost from, from four out, three out, two out, and he lost ground on the running to the second and third as well. He's got a tongue tie on now. He's going, uh, he's going back in trip. He think he travels really well. I just worry uh, about whether it'll be too quick for him. But I think he's, I think he's a potentially a very nicely handicapped horse. Um, did get low at a couple of fences at Weatherby. You don't want to be doing that at Newbury, but but Fanyan Destreval did that a few times. You can go through them. Um, so I think yeah, you know, I think he's potentially the best handicap horse in the race. If the ground is faster, Frero Bamboo ran a very strange race. Uh, when what was fourth. that all about? Uh, well, I don't know. Well, like he was going to pull up. And I mean, well, he actually, forth. they actually decided to go with the the speed to start with. Mm. Then thought, well, hang on a minute, they're going too fast. Went all the way back to last. Uh, and yeah, and then ran through him again, and then tired again. It was it was a very strange race. His fourth to editor to Guy in uh, in the red run at Aintree is obviously good form, uh, and you know he's again he's a, and Venetia Williams is now in cracking form, uh, which she wasn't so much then. Um, he's got to have a massive chance uh, as well. There'd be my two against the field. I will probably end up backing back from because it would just annoy me if they cleared Danny wins despite the ground. OK. A uh, couple against the field then for, for Kiel's Eclair, Dane and Frere Bamboo both at 6-1 uh, at to one here. Uh, Il Rodoto is quite interesting as well. Nichols has won this uh, a couple of times in the past 10 years with uh, French uh, imports. Uh, and uh, a four-runner race last time out, but every other horse has come out and won since, uh, Tom. So he's an interesting one. And Numitor, what do we talk about? Front runners again. This horse uh, uh, 
uh, looked in cracking Nick with himself last time out and I thought could uh, well be uh, hard to catch it from the front. Uh, two mile handicap chase, uh, what did you fancy Mr Siegel? You have just stolen my thunder, Mr. B. Uh, <laughs> Numitor was my fancy. I thought he was really impressive at, at Weatherby. Uh, I'm going to get the lead. Tom Scudamore, one of my favourite chase jockeys, is on board. Uh, if you watch the Weatherby race, it was good ground to start with, which was my worry for him when he was going into Weatherby. I thought he was a soft ground horse. It was good ground at Weatherby. The time was good. He was, he was going to win by miles, and he literally must have lost five lengths worth of momentum at the second last couple went past him, a couple of well-handicapped horses, third's come out and won since, uh, and he picked up again and won easily. He's only gone up five pounds. I think he would have won by 10 lengths if he hadn't made that mistake, and he would have gone up 10 pounds. If he gets his own way out in front and jumps as he can, I don't think they'll catch him. Unfortunately, he was a 14 to one shot a few minutes ago, and now I look and he's a six and seven to one shot. So, uh, you know, we sort of missed, missed, missed a trick there, but I do think uh, Numitor's going to run a massive race in, uh, here tomorrow. Yeah, it could be seven or two after a couple of fences, though, if he uh, if he gets into that rhythm out in uh, out in front. Uh, and yeah, the third, the fourth, and the eighth have all come out and won next time out. And uh, like I said, editor Dejit before midnight, plenty of two mile chasers have won uh, from the front recently. So uh, Numitor, I agree uh, with you, Tom. Apologies for stealing your thunder, but. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's plenty of thunder around, so let's hope it, uh, it continues for this 3.35. Uh, David Stevens, last race of the day we're going to, uh, to preview here. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the talk of the market here? Uh, obviously, Numitor being shortened up uh, with, uh, with Tom's tip, but uh, anything else we should keep an eye on? Yeah, well, two that both been well mentioned here. Farah Bamboo for Venetia after that strange run makes a quick reappearance seven days on. He's 6-1 to one from 8-1, to one. and Numitor that we've heard all about there. Again, the double-figure odds have all gone about him into seven to one. Tom Scudamore rides him, of course, another Coral ambassador. And there is plenty of optimism from the saddle as well. You'll be glad to know. So Numitor and the Venetia Williams horse would be my two anyway. And they are being backed as we speak. OK, we're all uh, pretty much in agreement then for this uh, this two mile handicap chase. So the horses to focus on to see out uh, the the day for the races we're previewing them. That pretty much brings the the show to an end for Labrook Trophy Day. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Fingers crossed Newcastle gets the go ahead with those uh, those high wins because we could see some interesting races there. But Newbury very much the uh, the star of the show. Uh, let's hope we can get some naps landed as well. First things first, Paul Keeley, what's the best bet of your Saturday afternoon? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't get over the, the drift on Fortune and Glory, so I'm going to go for that in a 150 at Newbury. I think it should be shorter than he is. going to relish the trip. Okay, Fortune and uh, Glory then. For glory, glory, and glory and Fortune. Glory and Fortune. Which, fortune. Yeah, you, oh, you, I knew I'd get it the wrong way around. <laughs> Either way. Uh, but, uh, uh, glory and Fortune uh, will hopefully bring Fortune and Glory. Uh, Tom Siegel? A new mentor for me in the last. I think he's got a good chance. Okay, new mentor it is. David Stevens. I'm going to be much less brave than those boys and say Soaring Glory will definitely win the forerunner, Jerry Fielden. And just a shout out, of course, on all Newbury races tomorrow, I'll fail to finish offer. If your horse doesn't finish for any reason, you get it back uh, as a free bet up to £10. I say that's on all the Newbury cards tomorrow. But yeah, Soaring Glory, a very safe, I hope, looking nap. Oh, I hope your uh, nap fails to finish in front of my nap because I'm taking you on, David. Uh, I didn't think anyone was going to go for that race. That was the one that nobody wanted to talk about, but Captain Morgs would be my nap for, uh, for Saturday. Uh, I'll settle for a dead heat. Uh, but, uh, guys, thanks ever so much for, uh, for getting uh, uh, involved and thanks everyone to everyone uh, to watching at uh, home. Again, if you haven't already, if you've made it to the end of the show, then please do like that stream and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't. Uh, thank you to Paul Keeley, thank you to Tom Siegel, thank you to David Stevens, uh, thank you to everyone for watching at home. Please gamble responsibly on Saturday afternoon uh, because uh, we've got uh, plenty of racing to get through. We will see you uh, once again in a couple of weeks, so enjoy your weekend and we'll see you uh, a little bit later on.